This teaching is brought to you by Christian Family Church, Emilach Lenny. God is good. And all the time. God is good. Can you just uh, hold somebody's hand beside you? Just squeeze that hand. There's a difference between squeeze and break. <laughs> if this thing leads to court, it's not my fault. I'll be leaving tomorrow. Uh, ju- just squeeze that hand and say to that neighbor, you must really be blessed to be holding this hand. <laughs> Enjoy the hand now while I'm close to you. Because not long from now, where God will be taking me to, you will need to go through the gate and the the security at the gate. (laughs) Then get to see the receptionist who will lead you to my PA. Who will see if you are good enough to see me? So enjoy the hand now. Hallelujah. Wow. Now I came with the most beautiful woman in Africa. You know, when you are a pastor, you really... Don't, you can't be in a hurry in marrying. You must get the best one so that you are not tempted. So I got me the best. You know, very, very smart, very beautiful, very charming, very elegant, very wonderfully, you know, graciously, blissfully, you know, blessed. And that's Prophetess Titi Goro. I did not just marry a believer, but I married a prophet. So when things are not working, I can ask her, what's the Lord saying? (laughs) Can you just greet the people before we get into what we have? Good morning, everyone. And thank you once again for inviting us. Can we clap for the angels in the house? Pastor Warren and his lovely wife. Pastor Maria, God bless you. And the leadership, God bless you. Thank you so, so very much. It's been wonderful. Thank you for your hospitality. We've been blessed tremendously. And the ladies, mwah! <laughs> Hallelujah. I want us to shout to the Lord with a shout of triumph. The word of God says with joy. Shall we draw water out of the well of salvation? In the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. And in its right hand, there is pleasure forevermore. You cannot be in his presence and be sad. Can you shout if you are the witness? Glory! Come on, shout to the Lord! Glory! Hallelujah. Give your neighbor a high five as you majestically take your seat. Can you just celebrate the band? Wow. I like those chords, man. Don't tempt me to sing now. Okay. Uh... It's a joy to be here. I want to appreciate my friend and brother from another mother. You know, don't really mind too much why he looks that light, you know. (laughs) When he came out, he fell into bleach. (laughs) So, that just... And you know, accidents happen in life, you know. So... It's not my fault, and it wasn't our mother's fault either. So, 
and I'm so excited to have met him with his wife. You know, she hardly says anything. You know, she just almost makes you suspicious of what is on her mind. And so, and it's a joy to be here. And they've got such a great, great family. You know, I met her, their son and his beautiful wife. And uh, they understand he has another son uh, who's married, you know. And then I, I, I thought the, the two sons were not married because I, had two do I have two daughters. <laughs> so, but anyway, the Lord will give us our own son-in-laws. So, so such a great blessing to have you people uh, to believe in this vision. You've got such a great church, man. You make, you make me feel jealous, like we should swap. He can go pastor in Vinduk and I can pastor here. But since we're brothers, just uh, of different mothers or different fathers or whatever, uh, the, I can always come here again and again because this is home. And, and thanks, Pastor, for inviting me and your beautiful wife and the entire leadership of the church. It's a, really a joy to be here. I don't count it as you know, uh, something that we qualify for. It's really an honor. It's, we count it as a privilege to be here. And thanks for trusting us you know, uh, to be here. Especially you know, somebody you haven't known for that long and you just entrust him with your pupil. One message can scatter a church you've been building for many years. But I believe it's faith and trust that made you to say yes to the Lord in allowing us to come here. So we, we, we trust the Lord that before we are gone, whatever God has for everyone here, we will just be carriers, we will just be vessels in his hand to release his purpose. It was John the Baptist who said, when the, his disciples came over to him, uh, they noticed that there was another person who was in the same trade as him. And he was on the other side of the Jordan. And so they said, uh, the one that, it, it, we saw somebody who is doing the kind of thing you're doing, and it, it looked like the one you baptized. And, and, and it looks like we're losing people here. And a lot of people are now going to him instead of coming to us. So John the Baptist looked at them and said, uh, in John uh, chapter 3, verse 27, he said, a man can receive nothing unless it's given him from above. And so it's important for you and I to know that in life, success does not answer to smartness or how hard you work. It, it's not, a lot of people, you know, make the service of God uh, as if they are helping God. When you tell them to come to church, you know, they, they make, it, make you feel as if, you know, coming to church is, is such a great deal that for them to give up other things to come to church, they are doing some sacrifice. And sometimes I, I wish God would allow me to make certain requests that he should put a meter against everybody's nose so that he can check the amount of air you are breathing and then his own heavenly municipality will send you the bill. <laughs> and let me see if we can pay. Uh, uh, Pastor, is this still fine if I come down? Is it okay? I know today is Sunday and it kind of no, it doesn't look that good. To, to, but it's, it's like I'm fine. I want to be close to you. Is it fine? Yes. Can I, can, I, I, need you, I need to see some of you yes. closely. Amen. Yeah. You look more beautiful than I'm seeing from upstage. <laughs> so it's important for you and I to know that a man can receive nothing unless the Lord gives to him. Jesus said, labor not for the meat that perishes. Never you go through life just 
working. To, it's, it's like just to be sustained by working. It, it, the Bible says, Jesus was saying in the book of Matthew, chapter number six, he says, you can't serve God and mammon together. God knows where our hearts are at. We say we serve God, but in reality, we are serving Pharaoh. And Pharaoh's design is to make sure that everything you do is to serve him. And Pharaoh will never let you go. But who knows here that serving Pharaoh, you can work as hard and still have nothing. So the only time that the Israelites had something in their name was when God's favor came upon them. Psalm, Psalms uh, chapter number, uh, uh, is it uh, uh, 102 verse 13? It says that thou will arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yes, the set time has come. What 10 years of labor cannot deliver to you, one encounter of God's favor will give to you. I'm not saying don't go to school. I'm not saying don't work. But I'm just saying don't give, give all your time just working. Give God his time. Give God his time. You can, you can tell God, you know, but you're having too many meetings in church. Have you ever told the people in the shebins or in the, in, in the clubs that they're having too many meetings? When you were drinking like a fish in the sea, you, 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 you never missed. And sometimes you will go all night on Friday. And the eyes are red on Saturday, but you still continue. And that's why Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom of God. And it's right. See, Satan doesn't mind you're giving God 99%. He doesn't mind as long as he can have 1%. He's got you. There's an attachment to your life. Uh, James, the one who had a very close relationship with Jesus, what did he say in James chapter number 1, verse 17? So then every good and every perfect gift cometh from above, from the Father of light, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Good things come from the Lord, family. He created everything, not your smartness, not your brain, not your teacher, not the government, not even the ANC. I mean, don't tell them, I just said. <laughs> it, it's true because, thank you, what happened? It fell? You want to be my armor bearer? No, I'm enjoying holding this. When I hold it, I preach better. <laughs> Give her a good hand. She, she, enjoy, she told us yesterday, she just loves service. You know, so, and that's why she's doing that. Uh, amen. And so, it's important for you to know God wants everything. Yeah. You can't give him part of it. Somebody says, I'm going to give God 50, I hold 50. You're finished. Yeah. He's all. He's everything. Yeah. Your job is not number one. God is number one. Your marriage is not number one. Some people want to get married and they'll come to church. Oh, God, give me wife, give me husband. The moment God gives them the wife or the husband, they go on honeymoon and never return. <laughs> we are down on earth and they're in the moon. <laughs> oh, Lord, I want children, I want children. And, and then the moment the Lord gives them the children, oh, my goodness, oh, my goodness, oh, my goodness. No, I mean, Listen, the way we did with our children, my wife had her firstborn when, I mean, our firstborn went on the day we were coming back from a crusade. We, we hit home around 11 by 12 something. She was pushing. We said, push, honey. Push that, that boy out. He cried out, preaching his first sermon in the hospital. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When God gives you children, what did the, the, the Bible say? What am I doing? I haven't started my message. Don't let that clock start until I tell you that I'm now starting. I'm just greeting, laying a preamble. 
I like, I, I like to go on the runway. I'm like an aeroplane. <laughs> you know, I, I'm, I, I'm not a, what is it, helicopter. You know, I, I like to take the runway, then make sure, gauge it, then I can take off. Okay. Is it fine? Can I still be on the runway? Yes. Okay. What was I saying before some of you <laughs> rudely interrupted me by your look? <laughs> what was I saying? You always remember what I said. Yeah, yeah, I knew you got me. <laughs> she, she's been buying my books, and, and so she seems to preempt what I'm about to say. <laughs> and so, at, at, our son, first day he was born, we knew the hand of God was upon him. Amen. Didn't the Bible say, the one who opens the womb? Mm. There's something about firstborn. Any firstborn here? Stand on your feet, I want to bless you. Father, I speak a blessing upon them. They are the ones that opened up the door, opened up the pathway, and I say the devil will have no part in you in the name of Jesus. In the, I release a blessing upon you in Jesus' name. Amen. Sit down and say, I receive. Amen. And so, so you, you, you re, the, that boy, the anointing was upon him, and it was in two weeks, the next week when my wife was in church with the boy. Some of you, you give birth and five months you are still at home. <laughs> By the time you come back to church, you are backslidden. <laughs> Let that boy know he's a church boy. Yeah. In scripture, they got the boy back to church the next week. And from then is church ever. I'm not saying go and resign from being doctor. We need you, they all, all, you do your pediatric or whatever. Uh, do hard, do and all those things. You know, check, check people, but let it be all about God, around God, and for God. Amen. Yeah, yeah, I know we need your money, but listen, how much did you contribute when God was building the world? How much money did you contribute for your nappy? Or your diaper? Anybody made a contribution? The milk you drank the first day you came out, how much of the money did you contribute? Nothing. And that's why we must know God can pay his bills. God can look after us. And so don't overwork yourself. Let everything be about God. Let it be about his kingdom. Not your kingdom. Not your kingdom, his kingdom. The moment you handle what belongs to God, he take care of what is yours. My wife and I have been on full time now for so many years, about 30 something years, and we've never lacked. The time I lacked was when I was in employment. Somebody had to decide what I'm worth. You are worth more than the salary you're waiting for at the end of the month that finishes two days after you're frustrated. Let God be your paymaster. Work for God and he will work for you. Are you hearing me? Look at your neighbor and say, work for God. Wow. Can I now preach? Thank you. I came to my brother's church. That's why I'm taking my time. I'm not following no clock. <laughs> you ever see anybody in their home putting a clock and say, honey, you, you, you're talking too long now. <laughs> Have you ever seen a clock in the house? No clock. When you're home, there's no clock. Especially if there is a woman there. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. You people sing great, man. Wow. When I grow up, I'll sing like you. <laughs> I want to share this morning on what I titled God Rewards Faithfulness. God Rewards Faithfulness. In the book of Genesis chapter number 12, God, called, actually let's back up, go to chapter 1 verse 26, 27, and 28. 
I, I will not read everything, but let me paraphrase. There God said, let us make men in our what? In our image and in our likeness and let them have what? Dominion. Then it goes on to say what they are to have dominion over. The, the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the face of the deep. And then, then, then it goes on and on. Verse 28 then says, and God blessed them and spoke about they being fruitful, multiplying, subduing, having dominion. And then, so that God created us to be in charge, to rule, to govern, to control, to set the pace of how things should be, of all his creation. So then, but then because of sin, men or humans fail out of that plan. And so God chased them out of the garden, as we all know. But the very word that God spoke to Adam in the book of Genesis, he spoke to Noah after the flood. When you read chapter 8, you know, you see the account of the flood. Then in chapter 9, look at verse number 1. Uh, it says something almost verbatim. Let's go to Genesis. Where are you, Genesis? Chapter 9, verse 1. So God blessed Noah and his sons and said to them, Be what? Fruitful, multiply, fill the earth. So now the same way, almost the same word that he spoke to Adam. Even though sin had come into the world, but God's plan had not changed. Before you messed up, God had an answer. And, and, and so the idea of the coming of Jesus was not an afterthought. It wasn't that God found himself on a corner uh, and then he was stuck, and then was, oh, what, what do we do? Oh, okay, okay. No, he had, he, his intent, his plan, his purposes were already set from eternity past into the eternity future. You are not a product of an accident, you are a design of God. Amen. And he already set the course of your life long before your great-grandmother knew your great-grandfather. Didn't he say before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you? He was saying to a young man who thought he was not qualified to do anything for God. Jeremiah chapter number one, you read from verse one to about verse nine. You will see the account there. So now, go, when you go to chapter 12 of Genesis, you will see where God then calls a man. Before God will bless you or bless the people, he will locate a man. I don't know why God doesn't deal with committees. And that's why God is never in politics. I'm telling you. I'm not against the politics of your nation, but I'm just talking about Bible. God was never involved in politics. The time that the people also wanted to get into politics, just like other nations, that's when their trouble started. So God is an autocrat. God decides what should be, and then he gets somebody puts his grace and his anointing upon that person, but any time he blesses the one, is for all. Any time God lifts you up, it's because somebody is down that needs lifting. Any time God blesses you because someone is under a curse and needs to be blessed. Any time God heals you, is because somebody is about dying and God wants to raise them from the dead. You are not blessed if everybody around you is cursed. I don't care how rich you are. If your riches can't reach people, you're a, a, a broke person seeing a lot of money. So we, then God said to Abraham, leave your nation, leave your people, leave your family, and I will give you a land, I will show you a land, and he says, I will bless you, and then make you a what? A blessing. And, and did he bless Abraham or not? Did he bless Abraham? Yes, he did. He blessed him, but the purpose of the blessing was so that Abraham can be a blessing. So God blessed him and made him a carrier of his blessing to, to generation. Do you know God is doing what he's doing in your life because of your neighbors? Because of some of your relatives that are not yet saved? Do you know why this place was built this big and God said, build me a large place? It's because there's somebody that's currently in the, in the club that needs to come in, but God had to start with you because you're a carrier. And God knew he can trust you. 
that you don't come to church alone. He didn't give you the bus so that you can prove you got more seats in your car. He didn't give you extra money so you can go around and show to the people and say, once upon a time it used to be many, but we are the ones now. Some of you think, you know, uh, oh, thank God, finally, we have left the, uh, we, we've left the township. Now we can come to where the, the, the bleached people are and have church. And you don't know that God, God brought you from the township to, 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 to where you are now so that through you, we can have the township filled up with churches Amen. that are also multiracial. Amen. Can you imagine an African going to a township? That's what this church is for, family. Amen. Breaking the middle wall of partition where, because you know there's no, there's no Soweto church in heaven. Amen. You know that? Yes. There's, no, there's nothing like Kosa or, or Zulu or what are the other tribes? Yo, Africa is all confused, man. <laughs> Sometimes I have a feeling like the Tower of Babel happened right in Africa. Confused languages. And then people are fighting each other because of just language. Language. I mean, and, that, and that's, he mean, it, uh, we need to come together and, and not allow these mundane divisions. I mean, that's why, you know, connected with my brother, my lost brother, long time. So we got together back so we can practice heaven here on earth. Because in heaven, there are no Africaners separate, and then the Zulu separate, then the the Belis, everybody's one. So, get used to it. Get used to it now. Hallelujah. That's why God sent you this pitch black preacher. Don't like me, I'm still having the mic. Hallelujah. So God, why am I saying this? God blessed Abraham not for, because Abraham was about his family. He was a racist. God had to bring him out and send him to the nations. And that's why I love the look in this church. All colors. All colors. Some tall, some short. (laughs) And God made sure he gave you the tallest as your pastor. So it can oversee whatever is happening. Yeah. Then gave him a church on a hill. Yeah. Then you oversee the city. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. So we are blessed to be a what? A blessing. So now, now, what am I talking about? God is a rewarder. So now, Abraham goes out and then the job begins. Look at Genesis chapter 15 verse 1. Sounds quiet in this Presbyterian church. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision saying, do not be afraid, Abraham. I am your shield, your exceedingly great reward. Abraham thought this thing is not working. God said, don't be afraid. I am your exceedingly great what? Reward. Listen, family, serving God pays. Don't let anybody tell you it doesn't pay. You know, some people say, you know, see, everything was going well until I met Jesus. No. That's when life begins. That's when life begins. Jesus said in John chapter 10, verse 10, the thief comes not but for to what? To steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I am come that they may have what? Have life and have it more abundantly. Having Jesus is abundant life, is joy, is peace, and in, in the Holy Ghost. Not that you get born again and you're 30 but you look 90. No. When you come into Jesus, he renews your youth like the eagles. Gives you a fresh look, not a panel beaded look. Fresh look. Fresh. Hallelujah. My wife is turning 60 next year. But she, does she look so? Yeah. 
You see, she looks far younger than some of you that are 39. <laughs> you, you notice I haven't called anybody's name. It's nothing. It's just the doing of the Lord. When you serve God, he blesses you and everything shows. Shows on the outside. Hallelujah. February, I turned 63. I'm not talking about 63 by faith. I'm talking about years in counting. I don't know about you. Some, some people, they want to grow old too quick. But for me, I'm not into the old business. <laughs> I said to our young people in church, some of them are saying, Pastor, we're waiting for you. You know, when you retire, then we will come and take over. I said to the young people, you have a long time to wait. <laughs> because I'm not into the growing old business. <laughs> and some people are in a hurry to die. Heaven is forever. Why do you want to die now? Me, me, I don't like dying. That means when you die, then you don't preach again. You don't see nice people like this. And especially to die and live this one. Oh, Jesus, no. Oh, no, no. I, me? You see me again here next year. I'm not dying. Cars are meant to transport people from where they are to where they are going, not to kill them. So no car can kill me. Aeroplanes are supposed to, because you pay for it, they are supposed to take you and land you, not crash you. So I say no aeroplane can kill me. Jesus was not killed, he laid down his life. So why do you want to be killed by cancer? Why? You say, but cancer kills people. Are you people? I thought you had a name. I thought you had a name. Hallelujah. God rewards those who serve him. Are you hearing me? A man by the name of Job served God, and because God blessed him, Satan got angry. You know, Satan likes poor people. He hates it when you are rich. Oh, he loved me many years ago. Oh, boy. We were so poor. Yesterday I told them 15 of us ate from one bowl. From one plate. And you couldn't eat until everybody came. In a little village. No electricity. Only had electricity. They had electricity just two years ago. I wore my first shoe. Plastic shoes. At the age of 15 or 16. But then. When I gave my heart to Jesus. The change was evident. Listen family. Those of you that are doing half half with Jesus. Come in full. This is where life is. You can't, you can't be in and out, you know, saying, oh, I don't have time. The church is taking too long. No, we need to be in church all day. This is where life happens. Hallelujah. It's wonderful. So Job got rich and the devil got angry and he started to attack him. Then the wife said to him, Honey, you need to curse God so you can die. And that man was not into dying. <laughs> lost children, lost livestock, but the man refused to die. So what did Job say? And his friends didn't understand God's dealing with Job. And they started to criticize. Many times people don't know what God is doing in your life. And they misunderstand and they miscalculate what God is doing. And they open their mouth anyhow. That's what happened with the friends of Job. But they didn't know the man had a covenant with God. And so what happened? Job said in Job chapter 36 verse 11, he says, if they obey and serve him, they shall spend their years in prosperity and their, you know, their, their, their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure or vice versa. So he said, when you serve God, you will spend your entire life and days in pleasure and prosperity. Serving God equals prosperity. Prosperity, success, victory, healing, deliverance. Where you become a carrier of God's blessing. Wherever you go, you have an atmosphere that blesses everybody around you. 
You're not, you're not going around frustrated because of bills you need to pay. And when they talk about offering, you get so irritated and angry. No, you need to be excited. When they talk about tithe, you say, I want to give beyond 10%. God is so good to me that I, I, I'm not going to be arguing about, you know, is it gross or net? No. Listen, a person that has tasted the goodness of the Lord, you will be, you would not only give 10%, you give everything of you. The disciples were saying, you know, Jesus was speaking to a young rich man in the book of Luke, and he looked at this man and loved him and said, you know, the man said, what, what may I do, to, you know, to get into this kingdom? He said, the commandments, he said, I did this from when I was a kid. He said, okay, but there's one thing you lack. Go sell everything and give to the poor. And the gospel is preached to who? To the poor. Giving everything means that, do you know why you're working? It's so that we can preach. Because you don't like to preach. So God sends you to go and work. You earn that money. It's for us, brother. Don't tell me it's your money. Once upon a time, you were broke. You came to the church with nothing. We preach you feeling nice, and that's why you didn't commit suicide <laughs> until you got the job. Then now, we're asking you, we need to finish the church. We need to, you know, buy buses so that we can bus the people in, and then you squeeze in your pocket. Wait, once upon a time, the pocket had holes. Everybody here, you listen, when you work, we should share, man. It's not just you. I'm also working. Pastor is working. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just check if your neighbor's heart is still beating. <laughs> so Job said, if they obey, it's conditional. If they obey. If they obey, we activate God's blessing and enjoy the blessing when we play our own part of obedience. Job, Job said that, and in Job chapter number 42, look at verse 12, the Bible records concerning what happened. You don't always conclude a book when you are still in, in, in the first chapter. There's always a conclusion. Job had uh, you know, a great beginning, but Satan got angry and jealous and attacked him, and he lost almost everything, but he got everything restored because God is not a taker, he's a giver. Amen. Whatever you've lost, if it's health, don't ever say it, that God took away your health so that you can serve him better. If you were smart enough, you would have served him yeah. without waiting until you found yourself in hospital. Now, if being in hospital is what will help people serve God better, all the disciples would have had hospital beds. And especially the three that he loved very well. Peter, James, and John. They would have been in, 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 in a special section of the hospital. Maybe in the ICU. With all the gadgets. I mean, so they know God better. Sickness is from the devil. It cannot be from God. If it's from God, then uh, Acts chapter 10 verse 38 is a lie. And there's no lie with God. Acts 10 38 says, God, Jesus, whom God anointed with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good, healing, not some, not some, don't say, I mean, he healed Auntie Jane, but I don't know why I'm not healed. He went about healing, not some, but all, all, all. Look at my mouth, all. Everyone who would dare to believe. Everyone who would dare to believe, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Why? Because God was with him. All, 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 all. Hebrews chapter number 11, verse number 6. So then, without faith, nobody can please God. For anyone who comes to God must believe that he is, and he is a who? 
a rewarder. There's reward in faith, family. When we believe God, he rewards our faith. Trusting God, there's a reward. Serving God, there's a reward. Some people think they are smarter than you. They don't come to church. They are watching rugby and watching, watching soccer. And many times they become so frustrated because games are just games. Your best team loses and then you get frustrated. Hallelujah. It pays to serve God. It does what? It pays to serve God. It was Paul who said in the book of Galatians, chapter number 6, from verse 6, he says, He who is taught in the word should communicate with his teacher or the one who is being taught the word, the one who is doing the teaching. Another translation says, He who receives teaching should pay his teacher. Huh? Verse 7 says, don't be deceived, for God is not mocked. Yeah. For whatever a man sows, that shall he reap. Verse 8 talks about if you sow to the flesh, what will happen? Sow to the spirit, what will happen? Then verse 9, which is the verse I want to get us to. It says, don't be tired. Don't get exhausted. Don't get frustrated. Don't turn back. Don't chicken out when you are doing good. Don't be weary in doing good. Is serving God good? Is believing in the vision of the church good? Yes. Is finishing the church good? Yes. Is taking care of orphans good? Yes. Is forgiveness good? Yes. So the Bible says don't get tired while doing good. Don't be weary. For in due season you shall what? Reap if you faint not. Don't faint. Don't give up. Keep serving God. It pays. You may not see the immediate result now, but it pays in the end. God gave Abraham a promise that he will bless him and from him, from his offspring will the nations be blessed. But Abraham thought this thing is delaying. The wife suggested this plan B and they did it and that's why we have the terrorists today. Do you know Ishmael is from the Arab, uh, the Arab tribe. And, that's, and the Bible says the spirit, the son of the bond woman will always be you know, at a loggerhead fighting the one of the promise. Did God finally bless Abraham with a son or not? Because he already told him in chapter 15 of Genesis, I'm your exceedingly great word, reward. It's not just Abraham alone. Galatians chapter 3 tells us that everything that happened is so that the blessings of Abraham might come unto us who have received now salvation by faith. So whatever promise God was making to Abraham is supposed to be yours now. You're supposed to experience the same. The same. That's why I said don't be tired. Don't be tired. When you read the book of First, uh, sorry, Second Corinthians chapter number 4. Look at verse 1. There it says, Second Corinthians chapter 4, uh, 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 when you look at verse 1, it says, Seeing we have this ministry as to have received mercy, we faint not. So you need to know where God has planted you. It says we have this ministry. The, each of us sitting here, we have a ministry. Now, you may not be involved in it. You may be like a Jonah running away. But listen, a rat in your house, how fast can it run? Not one of us can outrun God. Some of you, God had his hand upon you. You started doing something in church and until offense came. You got offended. And you sat back and stopped doing anything in church. And then you said, I'll see what they will do without me. Before your mama met your papa, the world was going on and, and it was still spinning. 
Stop working and church will still go on. The Bible says, as for offenses, they shall come. But I've never seen anybody rise and achieve greatness if they are living the life of offense. Make up your mind that you're not going to allow anybody offend you and make you walk away from the blessing and the calling of God. Some people think they can keep trying churches. Get offended in church A, go to church B. Then get offended in church B, go to church C. Then move from church C to church D, D to E. Now, this is the, how to, to find out where the problem is. The problem may not be the different churches A, B, C, D, E, but the common denominator. The one with the same face that has appeared in all. Do you know in life, things are always there to upset us. But you must be so hooked with your destiny or to your destiny that your destiny and what God is doing and where he's taking you to is bigger than anybody's opinion. It's bigger than what anybody says about you. It's bigger than what anybody thinks about you. Because you're going to stand before the Lord to give account of your life. Hey, no, pastor, don't push me. You know, I, I have my own time. No. It's not about push. It's to help you into your destiny. The fulfillment of your destiny. Seeing we have this ministry. As we have received mercy, we faint not. Paul said to the Corinthians in 1 Corinthians chapter number 4, verse 1. He says, verse 1 and 2, uh, especially verse 2. He says, it's required in stewards that a man be found what? That a person be found what? Faithful. Faithfulness. That means loyal. Loyal. Committed. Dependable. Trustworthy. You can't be a member of a church that you don't trust. You can't follow a pastor that you are suspicious of. Amen? You know, you hear some people asking, and oh, what are they doing with our money? How much did you put? <laughs> and sometimes the people that don't give are the ones that talk the loudest. Yeah. I wonder what they are doing with our money. I wonder what they are doing with you. No, you, what are you doing with God's money? Amen. Can you imagine if the angels start asking you, what are you doing with God's money? What are you doing with God's money? And some of you will carry God's money and waste it on Brazilian hair. <laughs> Instead of putting that money in the offering so we can finish the church. And just be satisfied with your, you know, the one that came, you came from your mother's womb with. These days, brothers, before you marry, you must check to be sure everything is original. I'm telling you. And that's why you can't marry because of the size and the color of the nails. I was baptizing one time in church. I mean, uh, my wife also pastors one of the branch, uh, uh, branch churches in the city where we come from. And th this particular day, I was baptizing some members of our church. And I had people come in and baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Then another one, then another one. Then this woman came. Uh, and so I was, t I was in the same water, same pastor, same water, <laughs> but different woman. So now, I, I held the woman, and she was, she was the African size. <laughs> but God's grace was upon me to hold her. So I said, I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Everybody that I baptized before her went out with no accident. <laughs> but with this woman, 
as I baptized her in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and she got up, I, I saw one woman standing, and I saw another woman still in the water. So I said, Lord, I know I'm wearing glasses, but the last time I used them, they were working well. And so I, I don't know what happened. Did I just kill somebody? I thought all the others that I baptized went out of the water. And I looked again and looked down. There's a head of a woman, but there's a complete woman standing. So, Pastor, I'm wondering, now what's happening today? I killed somebody. We are supposed to baptize people, not drown people. Then I realized that the one standing is the real woman, but the one in the water is the Brazilian. <laughs> Hallelujah. Wow. So what am I saying? There are things we worry about that we shouldn't worry about. I use everything for God. Use everything for God. Hallelujah. These days, you have eyelashes that you're not sure if they're real. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, God rewards. God rewards. Say, God rewards those who serve him. <laughs> Hallelujah. God is a second uh, Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 13. Just look at it. Are you getting anything? Yes. Oh, Jesus. Wow. Ooh. Look at verse 13. But as for you, brethren, do not grow weary, weary, tired in doing what? As for you, brothers and sisters, don't grow tired. CFC, don't grow tired. We have just started. Don't grow tired. We've just started. Still more ground to cover, more souls, more harvest to bring into the kingdom of God. Don't get tired. Of the home sales, the live groups. You just got into the first year in Bible school. Don't get tired of the assignments. Just got married. Don't get tired of your husband's spookiness. <laughs> A lot of men are spooky. Started right from our great grandfather Adam. That's why a lot of men go drinking. They can't talk outside, so they talk inside. And it's more dangerous. It's actually better to just, let's know what you think. Yeah. Than this man that is going quiet, but before you know it, then he pulls out a gun. Some men are not real men of God. They are Mike Tysons. <laughs> Hallelujah. If you notice any man, quiet, then he may need to be suspected. <laughs> it pays to serve who? God. Look at what Paul said when he was speaking to the, you know, Paul had such revelation of God rewarding when, when people serve him. First Corinthians chapter number 15, look at verse 58. Verse 58, it says, <laughs> it, it, it Oh, it says, be steadfast, immovable, abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Amen. So what you do, your singing is not in vain. Don't say, why must I be singing always? How much are they paying me? Did you buy the voice? No. Also, get happy that at least you can sing on key. There are some people that are tone deaf. Haven't you seen wooden mic? 
So you should be happy. Sing and sing. Make some melody. And some of you that are, you know, very good in singing and you're hiding yourself, we shall find you soon. We shall find, and there's some of you, and I notice that the men are playing the instruments and the ladies are singing. Don't you know in heaven we will all sing? So let the men come and sing the tenors. Let's have more men. Where are the men? Come and sing. Don't just let it be women or ladies. Let the men that can sing come and sing. Who told you it's only young people that can sing? Oh, only the youth. Me, I'm grown up. Gro no, come and bring your grown up voice. We need your grown up voice to bring the baritone. Oh, hallelujah. Maybe that's your, your pitch. <laughs> Just don't do it at home at night. <laughs> or the neighbors will start calling the police. There's somebody in this in the, in the next year. He, he, he can let us sleep. I don't know what's happening. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, can you come and check? Come and check. Do it in church because the acoustic is fine to handle. Ah! Yeah. Pad it well. Use your gift. Paul said to young Timothy, don't let, neglect the gift that is in you that you receive by prophecy, the laying on of the hands of the presbytery. You can't sit down in the house of the Lord just receiving. Yeah, that's right. God gave you so you can give out. Gave you the talent so you can use it. You say, no, me, I'm just, me, I'm just. No, no, that just is what God lo is looking for. Even if you're a housewife, you can be a housewife for Jesus. You're a grandmother, be a great grandmother for Jesus. Because grandmothers in the Bible, they were always in church praying, not gossiping in the neighborhood. Be steadfast immovable, abounding in the work of the Lord. Knowing that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. It's not in vain. What, the, what did David, the psalmist say in the book of Psalms 126? Look at verse number five. Are you getting anything? Are you getting anything? Okay, look at verse, verse five. Psalms 126. Oh, Jesus. Okay, it's there. Oh, no. Those who sow in tears shall do what? Reap in joy. Those who sow in tears shall reap in what? Shall reap in what? Shall reap in what? Now, can I prophesy to somebody here? You've been sowing of time. You've been sowing love. You've been sowing resources. You've been giving in this house. It may look like the devil and hell came up against you, your business, your family, and everything around you, and the devil is saying, see now, you've been giving, you've been giving, see what has happened. But I want to let you know, when you sow in tears, you will not reap in tears, you will reap in joy. You reap in joy. Seeds that fall in good soil don't just die. They die to come alive and produce. I see that business of yours coming back alive. I see resurrection anointing coming on your marriage, coming on your body, coming on your business. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy resurrection. The disciples said, we left everything and we followed you. And Jesus said, no one who has left father, left mother, left houses, left lands for my sake, or giving them up for my sake, who will lose? You think God didn't see your, your, your rents inside this building? You think he doesn't know? 
So anyone that comes here and gets blessed, my coming here to preach that is changing and touching lives, those of you who gave to make it happen, it's, it's put in your account, and the day God is going to pay you back, the nations of the earth will watch and ask, how did you make it? The Bible says there is the one who scatters and yet increases. The one who scatters and yet increases. We pastor a church, and, and I'm walking this thing to a close, and I will soon close. We, we pastor a church in the poorest part of our capital city. It was so poor and, that, and infested with crime that the police will not even go there if there's crime. When the police, are, the police are told to go there, they will say, no, 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 it's too dangerous. And God sent us there. Somebody actually met me one time and said, Apostle, God, you are pastoring at the very gates of hell. That's how bad it was. We started and we had a tent that we were meeting in. Uh, and, and Before the church, we had a tent meeting going. And the th in one of the nights, the, the, there was the, the, we had the generator that we was powering our equipment and the lights. And so uh, and the, the petrol finished and they needed to just refuel. In, so just the few minutes of refueling in the darkness, the, the moment the, the lights came back on, these thieves were carrying the loudspeakers. <laughs> with, with the crowd sitting in the tent, but the thieves were carrying the loudspeakers to go. That's the kind of area we started the church in. And one of the nights we had a young man in the tent just to watch over the, uh, the uh, 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 equipment. And while they were lying down, some thieves were cutting the ropes to carry the whole tent away. Those were the kind of people God sent us to start a church. In. And as we started, the Lord told me, teach them everything you will teach everybody that comes to Christ. So I taught them about who you are in Christ, taught them about righteousness, taught them about Grace taught them about forgiveness, taught them about the new life, taught them about giving, taught them about tithe. People said to me, you can't teach poor people tithe because they are poor. And one thing many people don't know, if you don't tithe, your life will be tight. I've stopped arguing, Pastor, about tithing. Those are kindergarten stuff. Nursery stuff. Oh, tithe has passed with the Old Testament. How come, if you believe Old Testament is not for us today, why do you read Psalm 100? Why do you read Psalm 23? The Lord is my shepherd, as you're not one. He makes me lie down. It's also in the Old Testament. Eh? And let me tell you, why? Somebody said, you oh, know, but in the New Testament, Paul never said anything about tithe. He didn't have time to waste on kindergarten stuff. He was talking about real stuff. <laughs> yes, he already so that his understanding was that anybody that has experienced the grace of God already knows the goodness of God and he knows that he and everything that he has belongs to God. That's why he's talking about giving everything. Yeah. Not 10%. But well, some of you are still babies, what the Africans call barbecue. <laughs> Pastor, you know, uh, things are kind of rough for me these days in my business. That's why you have not seen my tithe. Oh, you're a baby that has a, owns a company. It's a pity. There are baby owners of companies. Because they can't tithe. You touch about their money. That's how babies are. You give a child something and you say, can I have? So we taught them giving. Taught them sacrifice. From a squatter's camp, we built our church. We owed the bank not a cent. And the church today is valued close to 14 million. Cash. The same place where the people were thieves. 
And I'm happy you're building your church, finishing everything, cash. Oh, in nothing. All, very few bleached people do that. <laughs> they like going to the bank manager. Most of the bleached people I know, they only go to the banks. They trust the banks more than they trust God. Yeah. Why, why, are you, why are you looking at me like you haven't, you haven't seen bleached people? Okay. Can I say it in another way? The pink people. You understand? Because there's no white man. You see a white man, you think it's a ghost. What color is this? Is there anybody like this in this church? So how come you call some people white? So he should be happy I even called him bleach. That's even... What color is this? What color is this? Is this my color? And call somebody black. Even the devil, his color is not black. <laughs> He's just a spirit. You know, that's the language that makes people feel inferior or superior to somebody else. And guess what? You are nothing without God. I am nothing without God. You are not the color of your skin. Are you hearing me? Zulu girl, thank God for the way you are. Oh boy, are you, when I, one day I was preaching in Zambia and I said, there's no black man, no black man. Wow, and I saw one sitting in the middle. I mean, you couldn't differentiate. You only knew somebody was there when he smiled. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> we need to finish. I've gone beyond my time. Can I close now? Can I close now? Can I close now? Now, you, you, you're setting me up so they don't invite me again. You, you are not part of the committee that invites, so if I go by what you are doing and I get overexcited and preach myself far beyond the time and then the clock starts saying, Pastor, you know our arrangement. I gave you the time before you came up. I even gave you 10 extra minutes. You shot beyond it. And you said you were laying introduction. And then you allowed the people to shout you to continue. You'll never come back here again. <laughs> Hallelujah. 